So Google just released the product review update and a lot of bloggers are kind of freaking out about this. So in this video, I wanna talk about what the product review update is, why I actually don't think it's that big of a deal right now, but some things also that you can do going forward to kind of help get around this update. You may remember back in April, Google released the first version of this product review update, and this is what it said. So in this update, Google was telling us here, the overall focus on this update is providing users with content that provides insightful analysis and original research and is written by experts or enthusiasts who know the topic well, so again, this was all about the product review update and they want it to be written by people who actually know what they're talking about instead of people just summarizing reviews. Now in this April update, they didn't actually explicitly state that you must physically own the product that you're reviewing, that you mu must actually have evidence that you're actually using and have in your possession the product that you're writing your review about. But in the update that just came out, they kind of changed their tune on that. So here you can see the language from the December update and Google is saying, we're introducing two new best practices for product reviews to take effect in a future update. And this first bullet is really the most important part here. Provide evidence such as visuals, audio, or other links of your own experience with the product to support your expertise and reinforce the authenticity of your review. And so what Google is basically saying here is, hey, if you're gonna do a product review, you must actually own the product that you're reviewing. You must have actually used the product in real life. And again, a lot of bloggers are kind of freaking out about this because let's be honest, myself included, most niche site owners, most bloggers, when we're doing reviews or roundup reviews, we don't actually have our hands on the product. And now we have Google coming out and saying, hey, we're announcing this update and we're explicitly telling you if you wanna do product reviews, you actually have to have owned or used the product. So let me say, I, in one way, I do think this is a big deal going forward, but for right now, I actually don't think it's that big of a deal as most people are making out to sound. And that's because when you think about it right now, 90% at least of all reviews or product roundup reviews on the internet from all types of sites are reviews that the person does not actually have the product in hand. And I'm talking about not just small affiliate sites, not just small niche sites. I'm talking big, big domains like Business Insider and New York Magazine and even CNN. They're doing these roundup reviews where they don't actually have their hands on the product, right? And so if you think about it, Google still needs to rank somebody on the first page for all these best product type reviews, okay? Not everyone is the wire cutter. In fact, the wire cutter is really, really the small minority of sites who actually have their hands on the product, right? And, and the wire cutter is set up for huge success in that regard. But right now, right now when this update is taking place, I don't think we're gonna see that much of a shake in the search results just for the fact that the vast majority of sites aren't actually reviewing the product. So who is Google gonna rank, right? If only the wire cutter is reviewing the products, who's gonna rank number two, three, four, and so on down the rest of page one. So I actually don't think we're gonna see an immediate impact of this update on most affiliate sites. Now, that being said, what I do think this update is going to accomplish is going forward, right? From this point forward, Google's basically putting a stake in the ground and saying, if you wanna do a product review, we wanna see that you actually have your hands on the product. So I do think going forward, Google's kind of raising the bar for product reviews. Maybe we have to go back and update some of our reviews and I'll talk about that in a second on how exactly to do that. So right this instance, I don't think it's a huge deal because again, who else is Google gonna rank for all these review keywords? But going forward, I think Google's kind of setting the tone for what they expect with these types of posts. So if we look at a site like the wire cutter, right? So this post on best humidifier, they actually have tested all of these products. They've either purchased them or maybe they've gotten them for free, but they've put them through test. They've researched them. They've actually used the products, but again, the wire cutter is one of the very few sites that is actually doing this. 
you know, most even again, big domains like Business Insider, New York Magazine are not going into this level of detail. So do I think every niche site, every affiliate site is gonna have to go into this level of detail with their reviews? I don't, you know, if you wanna outrank the wire cutter, maybe so, but I don't think we're in this place where every site now has to become the wire cutter. Even still, we do wanna up our product review game a little bit. We wanna show Google somehow, some way that we have our hands on the products or we are appearing to have our hands on the product. So let's talk about the best ways to do that. All right, so my first strategy here is to buy and resell the product. So doing this, you actually get your hands on the product. Let's say you buy it from you know, the Apple store and then you go and resell that product either on eBay or something like Facebook Marketplace. For example, let's say you wanted to write a review of the Apple HomePod mini, right? And you can see here that it retails on the Apple store for $99. So you could do your review of the HomePod mini, get videos of you using the product, get a ton of pictures. And then once you're done with your review, you pack it up in the box and list it on say eBay. And then here you can see that refurbished ones are selling on eBay for about 80 bucks, right? And since you could say that in your listing, you're, you know, you only used your unit for a day or two, you could probably get even more than $80 selling it back on eBay. So all in, let's say you do a full hands-on review of the HomePod mini with videos, with pictures, and it only costs you about 20 bucks, right? That's not that bad. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, before we get onto the next strategy, do me a favor and help out the YouTube algorithm by hitting that like button below. All right, so strategy number two here is to reach out to the manufacturer. If you're looking to get a completely free product, you could reach out to the manufacturer and tell them you're doing a review or a YouTube video or a post and in exchange for you know getting them exposure for their product, if they could give you the product for free. Now, obviously for huge brands like Apple, you're probably not gonna get a free HomePod mini, but for smaller players in your niche, it's definitely a good strategy to, especially if you have a lot of page views or maybe a big social media following to explain to them that you're creating a post about X type of product. You wanna maybe feature their product in your post or in your video, tell them how many readers you get, tell them how many social followers you have, and you have a good chance of getting that product for free. For example, when I first launched my membership site, I was trying to secure some exclusive discounts on blogging tools and themes for my students. So I reached out to a bunch of companies and just asked for a discount, right? Like with the Cadence theme here, one of my favorite WordPress themes, I sent them this email basically telling them I have X amount of students in my courses, I'm launching a membership. And in this email, you know, instead of asking for a free product, what I asked for was a discount. And since I was able to get their product in front of more eyeballs, they were more than willing to give my membership members a discount on the theme, as you can see right here. And the same idea applies to, again, physical products maybe you're reviewing on your site, or maybe it's even software. If you can explain to the company what's in it for them, it definitely doesn't hurt to ask if you can get some product for free or maybe even at a discount if you tell them that you're gonna reviewing it for your audience. All right, strategy number three is to ask a YouTuber if you can pay them for their photos. All right, this strategy definitely requires a little more creativity, but if you're willing to put yourself out there a little bit, you can definitely get some really great product photos for your blogs for really, really cheap. And so of course, this is gonna involve, you know, doing a YouTube search for whatever product you're gonna review to see if any YouTubers have done video reviews of those products, actual hands-on reviews. For example, if I wanted to review these Bowflex dumbbells, you can see there are a bunch of videos of people actually using the product. And no, I'm not telling you to just take a screenshot of the YouTube video and put it on your blog without asking. What I'm talking about is sending an email to the YouTuber explaining to them that you're writing a blog post about XYZ, you didn't have a chance to get your hands on the product, you saw their video of theirs, and you're willing to pay X amount per photo, um, kind of as like a licensing fee with their permission, of course. 
Now, obviously with a huge YouTube channel, you know, those people probably aren't interested in your kind of 50 bucks, but if you found a smaller or medium sized channel that actually has videos and pictures of the product, you'd have a much better chance of getting photos for pretty, pretty cheap. So again, overall, I think that the product review update is not that big of a deal right now. I think it will become more of a bigger deal going forward as more sites adopt Google's guidance, which is to actually get your hands on the product. So if you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor and smash that like button and leave a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks guys.